Hey guys, I hope you guys are all doing okay. Well, this is a, another update to the uh, 433 MHz You Can't Hack This project. And today we've got a look at Roll Jam. And I built this Roll Jammer here. How to protect the design uh, from Roll Jam attacks. And to do that, of course, I need to build a Roll Jammer. So that's what I've done. And that's what this project's all about. Uh, learning about Roll Jams uh, and what we need to do to uh, put this protection in our project. So I'm not going to talk too much about the project itself here. There are three more videos. They're linked down in the description. Uh, so please catch up on that. Uh, we've got many subscribers on this. So I don't want to keep repeating this at the same stuff because it's not fair on them. So please look at the uh, look at the uh, original videos. Uh, as a in, in a nutshell, what this project is about is creating a 433 mega signal. That is a is a project that the user, the end user, can configure the different security methods, the different codes that it wants to send. We don't calculate codes; we use a random set set of set of uh, a random array of random codes that the user can change. Uh, so so there so there's no calculation involved. Therefore, we don't need to use encryption uh, because that just wastes energy from the battery uh, of, of the trans transmitter, which I don't want to do. And it is it is. It's a very secure way. It doesn't matter which which way you hash it. You know, it doesn't matter whether you record signals or not. You know, you're not going to work out what the next signal is. But <clears throat> that said, you know, so that that means that uh, replay attacks uh, are invalid. We can we can sort those out in the code. So no worries about that. Relay attacks. Well, you've got to press a button. So a relay attack that doesn't create as a concern for this project. However, roll jam, <clears throat> roll jam. Is a concern let's just look at what how roll jam works just briefly there's lots of information out on the uh, on, on the internet so it's not the scope of this video to, to discuss you know in detail what, what a roll jam attack is but the basic principle of a roll jam attack is that the the hacker or the criminal places a module near your receiver which transmits a jamming signal and the idea is when you press your remote it stops that and get it stops that signal getting to the receiver using the jamming signal, but also at the same time records that signal. Your door, let's say it's a garbage door, doesn't open, so you automatically press the receive the transmitter again to transmit a new signal, and this time uh, the the roll jam device copies that signal also, but sends the initial signal that it recorded. And it sits there, keeps keeps doing that, so it's always got a spare signal with a new rolling code that's not yet been used. It sits there until such time that the criminal wants to come and play that code. It's not a replay, of course, because it's never the, the receiver's never received that code. They play that code, and the garage door opens. That's the basic principle, <clears throat> and that's what this uh, this device does here. So let's dig in and and have a better look. Okay, so this is the uh, the Roll Jam program that we've got flashed into, into the Roll Jammer itself. And just before we go any further, just like to cover off uh, that we've we're monitoring the 433 uh, megahertz bandwidth uh, and anything inside this code that is actually trying to send any data into the wild has been out to make sure that we're not doing anything that we shouldn't be doing and I'm not unlocking uh, Fred's car. Uh, down the road or keep you know doing something that is a little bit dodgy that's not this that's not what i'm trying to achieve here i'm trying to make sure i can understand how to stop it for my project so let's have a look at what the roll jammer is actually doing so we've got here's here's the output so i started it at 7:47 this morning almost immediately got one packet then quite quickly got a second packet and it does so this is it replaying the first or fictitiously replaying the first so this is this is the packet that it would have it would have sent and it's of course at this point it's got the second one waiting to be sent so the idea really i mean this this code's not that intelligent if i'm if i'm honest uh it's written in such a way that now it just sits there and waits for somebody to press the button so it can send it can send the packet. Uh, what, of course, it should do as a proper roll jammer now is sit there waiting for another packet and then keep swapping that out. So the second, so the second packet will be sent to open open the door, the garage door, 
uh, well, keep it a third packet. And then if it got a fourth packet, it would send the third packet, etc. So it's always got a packet ready to be sent uh, to, to open the door. So that's that's the that's the idea. Uh, like I said, this, this particular code is not so intelligent. So let's just drop this over here for a moment and look at the code. So like I said, we've got anything that's trying to send a packet here commented out so send jam data's comment commented out send packets this is it, this is it trying to send the, uh, the, the the first packet when, when it receives it send packet etc there you go and that's that's when you press the button and it sends the next packet so all that's commented out so i'm definitely not sending anything into the wild and like i say i have got this checking all times to see if anything anything goes out and i can hear it in my ear uh, ear uh, if it uh, if it, if it does make any noises that I'm expecting, then I, I shall know that there's something gone off into the wild. But so far, no false results, and everything's good. So, what is this doing? From my investigations, and please, you know, hit me hard in the comments below. You know, if you if you can demonstrate that you see a project out there. That can be easily downloaded and uploaded onto a microcontroller like this, and it, it's capable of easily detecting a signal, and the user does, user being able to go, I want that particular signal, and then from that point forward, it, it it only records that signal, and so you so you can you you can actually do something you know criminal with it in a in a in a, in a useful way. In my experience on the internet, looking around GitHub, etc then there's nothing like that and the reason for that is is that you have to this this the tool itself has to understand what sort of code what sort of signal it's is designed to receive and and record if you like and that's no small feat uh it certainly certainly if i transmit mine then this this roll jammer is just going to ignore it and that's because it's not designed this 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 code and this setup down here, which is which is, which is done here, and I've been messing with this because I want to. I'm trying to replicate the signal, uh, but I think I'm going to do it a different way, which we'll discuss in a moment. So, all these different values are set up within the jammer itself to do certain things, like you know you've got uh, frequency controls. So this is set up to four three three point eight five. Uh, the jammer up here, which is uh, these signals here, which I just dropped dropped in here for a moment, so I can see them. This is set up to four four three three point five zero megahertz to to send out the jamming signal onto. And there's a couple of other changes here with the sync bits, uh, for instance, and that's to make sure that the uh, our receiver doesn't doesn't get 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 confused uh, with the jamming signal, if you like, so it can it can. Uh, it can look at these bits here to work out uh, what signal it's trying to trying to look for in the air, if you like, what what, what a valid signal looks like. So it's 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 reasonably complicated, uh, and I think if I'm honest, I think I need to write my own. I mean, I've been playing about with this uh, somebody else's code, and it's very well written. It's very very good, uh, but it's clearly written for a particular application. It's it's written so uh, it can detect a particular type of signal. It's clearly a common signal because I've picked one up here and, well, I say common. I left it running yesterday for about three hours and it didn't get a signal and all of a sudden it got one. So it's, it, 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 is, it is picking up something. There's no documentation with this project that uh, suggests what it was actually written for and what it was actually picking up picking up what what sort of signal and, and, and what that signal was was for uh i suspect it'd be a car some some sort of car that's generally speaking what these things seem to be written for i've also looked into the background the github and seen how many times it's been forked but there's there's nobody made any changes to this uh the area where i got this from uh it wasn't, wasn't forked it was cloned uh, as, as a GitHub project, but again, I've side by side looked at the look for any changes in the code, and and, and it's not been changed. So this is this is the 
This is the original code that was updated based on the back of the DEF CON 2015 announcement when this roll jamming sort of technology was first identified. Since then, of course, they've added Unix times and things, but I, I understand that in uh, October 2023, that was also hacked. So no longer a good idea to just embed a Unix time into the into the uh, into the code. But I mean, I think my my way I'm going to stop this if I'm honest, because I want to sort of feed it into a like a home home assistant type solution. What I want to do is I want to check the 433 megahertz frequency and look for any sort of jamming type activities in there. So I could be forewarned from my home assistant if there was sort of jamming activities around the area. But also I could code that into the RX and it would be intelligent enough to understand that there's, that there's jamming activity in the area. And by that okay fair enough you could say well okay kev you know it takes, it takes jamming activity what is it going to do not open the door well yeah exactly it's not going to open the door because you know for me i would i would rather in the event that somebody's trying to gain access then not let me in because i've got i can come through the house and and, and get where what, what this is going to secure my goal for this I, I i can get in another way if you like conveniences to be able to press the button let's say and, and and deactivate but uh i have got other means of getting in i accept that it could be a problem if you uh i don't know if you had no other way of access and maybe we need to build something in that goes well i use a different fob uh like a one-time fob you're aware there's a jamming activity in the area you where it you're aware it might be trying to to get into your uh, property or, or whatever so maybe there's maybe there's something we can do around that but ultimately i think the next step here is to write my own code what i'm thinking there is write my own jamming yeah you know, roll jam type solution just so i can uh i can i basically so i can i can make it do what a roll jam is supposed to do so i can so i can learn more of of, of how to detect it and i can show you now that uh I've done all sorts to try and get this this particular roll jammer to take it. I mean, I, I I've, I've got circuits like this. Do you want to say at this point, guys? Uh, look, if you, if this is interesting to you, please like, subscribe, hit that notification button, guys. You know, keep me motivated to carry on doing this and releasing the videos. I've got my own personal project. I think this is going to be useful to other people creating their own personal projects. A very unique design uh, that can be user configured uh, to make sure. It, each each particular implementation can be completely uniquely different uh, to stop things like roll jamming attacks, which we're discussing here. And if you think about that, uniquely different in every imp 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 implementation. And think about what we're talking about here with roll jam attacks and how it, the system needs to know exactly what it's expecting. Then that means it's very difficult for someone to create a generic roll jammer. They'd have to create a solution just to get in, 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 in into your and, 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 you know, just to crack whatever you've put in. So please like, subscribe, hit that notification key button. So this circuit I've, I've designed here, so this is this is basically transmitting hello world with a various degrees of you know, different uh, modulations. So top of my head, we're using two tone frequency shift keying. We're using four tone frequency shift keying. We're using amplitude shift keying. We're doing Gaussian shift keying. We're doing a, a plethora of different things with these with this. It's just constantly transmitting when I when when I do it. Obviously not to jamming sort of frequencies, but just you know, just keep every second new 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 signal out in, into the air. It would be a simpler exercise for me, if I'm really honest, to, to be able to be able to replicate the signal it's looking for so as I could test it in in in, in, in more detail. But I think ultimately what I'm after really is the is the types of jamming that, that uh, people use out there in the wild so I so I can detect that but I think just for the exercise I want to write I want to write the jammer itself what I've got here also on, on this I've got just the four buttons I've got the I've got the quiet chips that my project uses uh, these these actually bind to each other so this this transmitter is bound to this receiver here and you know we can just 
we can just press the press the button and uh oh it's not powered up yeah we can press the button any button and it light, light, lights up the led so that's the basic functionality of 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 the quiet chips and of course the main project here if i just slide that onto the table instead the ma the main project here adds a microcontroller we've got two two transmitters on on this board and a, and a receiver and of course what we do is we use the, the the microcontroller to embed embed a rolling code and transmit it leveraging the fact that a an a tx is bound to an rx and the fact that we can send a binary number using these switches if, if you like simulate the pressing of these switches we can send a, a a number between 1 and 15 and we send we send a number of those numbers uh user configurable uh from direct memory so an array of numbers uh so, so it's completely random and can't be uh, reverse engineered and we just send that and then if the if the receiver receives those numbers in the correct order and the and the expected ones etc then it then it it lights up the led so it's a it's a like for like it can be it could be swapped out from an original project and just as an added benefit we've it knows which the the original design of of these quite it doesn't know but we've built that in so we know which transmitters actually pressed pressed and that's because each transmitter has its own set of rolling codes known only to the to the rx so that should be pretty secure so guys don't really want to spend any more time on this video it was just really a quick update because you know obviously i got a lot of subscribers on this i mean plus 200 subscribers uh, just literally on these on, on the on this project so i want to just give you guys an update because i've not uploaded anything for sort of a week and a half two weeks uh and i wanted you to let, let you know that i'm still working on it it's not gone dead i am i am busy 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 uh but as as yet i think I haven't successfully managed to roll jam my device and to prove it's possible i need to do that the next thing i need to do to do that is i need to reverse engineer the actual signals itself uh using universal radio hacker and then i can i'll be able to understand the signals i'll probably do a video on that because there's nothing to hide here guys you know this project is about it not being hackable and to make sure it's not hackable I should be able to give as much information out that anybody with just a bit of basic equipment can pick up uh, by passively uh, listening to the 433 megahertz band and using something like uh, Universal Radio Hacker to, to to see what's contained in those signals. So I should be able to show that and still not create any vulnerabilities or make it easy to actually perform an attack on the system I'm trying to develop. So stay tuned, like and subscribe hit the notification button guys as always